Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum. This is Introverted Psychology Part 1 by Dear Knowledge. Okay, uh, we have uh, successfully completed the chapter 6 which is all about perception and then we started the chapter 7 which is all about attention and chapter 7 is the last chapter of Introversion Psychology Part 1 and I've divided this chapter into lessons and parts so uh, it will be easy for you to pick the point to understand the lecture without getting bored. So in a previous video we discussed about attention we discuss about the interruption of attention and uh, nature of attention and definition of attention and then we discussed about the attentional process and we also discussed it with uh, some proper examples in order to clear your concepts so if you haven't watched that video i have given the link in description go ahead click on that link and watch that video if you want to plus i've also given the links of the playlist of all the chapters i've composed compiled all the lessons of the previous chapters into a playlist for your ease. You can even watch those videos if you want to. I have given all the links in description. So let's start with today's video. Today's video is about the span of attention, which is the part two of lesson one. So let's start with the span of attention. Now, um, as we have seen of the wide range of stimuli around us, we attend to only a few. Now, we have also noted that attention divides a field of conscious experience into focus and margin. Now, the objects, uh, things, or events that enter into focus stand out distinctly clear and the rest in the margin are either out of or consciousness or if at all. Now, they give a very dim or hazy apprehension, which we have already discussed in a previous video. Now, at this point, an important question arises at to, um, as to what number of objects can simultaneously exist in the focus. Now, this question has been subjected to extensive experimental research and um, in general, the research studies have revealed that the capacity of attention is limited. Now, as such, in a single act of attention, one can attend to only one object. Now, therefore, different tasks requiring attentional resources cannot be carried out simultaneously because we have limited capacity uh, to process the incoming information. Now, um, in situations requiring to pay attention on two different sets of tasks, our attentional fo uh, process follows the principle of serial processing. That is, attending to one set of input and then to another. For example, you can probably not listen to music and read simultaneously because reading requires um, attentional process uh, or attentional resources for comprehension, but listening to requires attentional resources to comprehend the aesthetic pleasure as well as many details uh, inherent in music. So. Both of these tasks require simultaneous uh, or parallel processing, which is not possible in view of the limited capacity of potential mechanism or process. However, if the task is highly learned or uh, routinized, then it is possible to attend to two different tasks simultaneously. Now, for example, an efficient and perfect driver can uh, uh, drive the vehicle and also talk to the person sitting by his side or on the phone. Now, this condition is called automaticity. Uh, and in that case, parallel processing of attentional process may be possible. So, uh, when the two tasks requiring the complex processing cannot be processed in parallel sim or simultaneously, so therefore such tasks are processed in serial order uh, one, and, uh, one after another. Now, this is called central bottleneck in information processing, which is caused by uh, the limits imposed by attention when the tasks are complex. Now, um, in order to uh, ascertain the range of limitation of potential process, psychologists have made uh, attempts to in investigate the nature or, or the number of objects 
one can attend to at a brief exposure uh, that is a fraction of seconds usually one uh, uh, by tenth of a second and this is what we call span of attention or perceptual span now the definition would be the span of attention refers to the amount of information um, and observer can take into his focus of attention from among a complex array of stimuli at a single momentary exposure now uh, this span um, is determined by using an instrument which is called a uh, chistoscope and on the basis of several experiments uh, miller has reported that our span of attention varies with the limit of seven plus or minus two now, uh, this is commonly known as magic numbers. Uh, it means that in a given period of time, we can simultaneously attend to a set of five to seven numbers that can be extended to nine or uh, more under special circumstances. Now, perhaps this is the reason that motorbikes or other automobile um, automobiles are given a number plate that contains only four to five digit numbers. And even our landline phone numbers also range from six to eight while the mobile numbers contain a maximum of 10 digits um, and such limits of numbering are done keeping in view of the limited span of attention so that we may grasp such numbers uh, more conveniently now um, however this span of attention varies in accordance with certain subjective uh, objective or internal or external uh, stimuli or factors uh, such as the organization of the stimulus material uh, heterogeneity or homogeneity of the stimulus material knowledge of the result mental fatigue um, defects of the stimuli or defects of the sensory organ and presence of distracting stimuli and etc so this was all about today's video if your concept is clear you can like the video if not you can ask us in the comment section and we'll be happy to help you out plus if you're new to this channel you can subscribe to our channel you can subscribe to your knowledge and click on the bell icon so you will never ever miss any notification from us and you can share the link of this channel and the link of these videos with your family members and friends because sharing is caring until then Allah Hafiz.